Convex mirrors became fashionable in the early 19th century, especially in England during the Regency period. Today these mirrors are popular with interior decorators for their sculptural qualities and for their reflection of light. In about 1810, classicism influenced all interior decoration, and these circular mirrors find their origin in the Roman oculus, a round window or opening for light within a building. The best example of this is at the Pantheon in Rome, built in the 2nd century AD. The first recorded example of a convex mirror in Renaissance art is the Arnolfini marriage by Jan van Eyck in the early 15th century. At this time, glass was tremendously expensive, and convex glass plates are a remarkable achievement of early engineering. By the late 18th century, demand for mirrors had grown and production methods meant that, for the first time, the burgeoning middle class could enjoy reflections in their homes too. I'm going to show you three examples, the first of which is a small convex dating from about 1830. This example has a rope twist frame and is surmounted with a hippocampus, a stylized seahorse. This mirror has a simplicity of form and owing to its scale would have been made for an intimate room. As in fashion, furniture manufacturing was derivative and simple examples took inspiration from more elaborate forms. This mirror would have been owned by an affluent family. The quality of carving is exceptional. As with the previous example, it has a rope twist border, except in this instance we see ebonized elements. It also enjoys fanciful foliate carving and most importantly, it has two scrolling candle arms with cut glass sockles. Continuing the theme of stylistic derivation, here we have one of the finest examples of a convex mirror, in this case by Fenton of London. An ebonized eagle perches on the cresting, and from its beak dangles chains with gilded cannonballs and tassels. The frame is set with 50 gilded spheres and supports four scrolling candle arms, in this case inspired by Le Goût de Ligette, with their pharaoh heads supporting elaborately cut glass drip pans and finely cast brass sockles. This is a remarkable achievement. I hope that these three examples of convex mirrors will help you to see the breadth of ornament used at this time. These three mirrors prove how purity of form is consistent in antique furniture, that circular back plates remain fundamental to the design, and that the restraint or inclusion of ornament was very much subject to a client's personal preference, wealth and social status. But most importantly, by this time, good furniture had become available to more people than ever before, and the convex mirror reflects the optimism of the time. Convex perfection, at Timothy Langston.